a seal. This is Wayne Y. D. Needle. And of course, Louis Crown. Sun Condor. Sun Condor. Uh, this week's power animal, as we announced a little bit ago, uh, we had a little message posted there was the loon. The loon. This is this one is going to be the week of a little bit of homework for some people. Oh mercy. Before we get into that. Notice the books and stuff. Yeah, we, we got some books here. Um let's just remind some people about this creature. See if we can get this a little bit louder. For some people up north, they have heard this bird a lot, even in some of the um, so, uh, southern states, you've heard this bird. It's a very beautiful bird, white and black bird. Uh, usually the very haunting type of of uh, call. And uh, that'll be it on that. <laughs> but getting back to And you would say that kind of bird is a... It is a waterfowl. Um, it is... Uh, this particular bird, when it when it appears... Uh, first of all, let, let's do a little... Hello, Randall. Quick, hello, Randall. Uh, let's do a quick uh, uh, history about it. Uh, it is considered one of the most unique water birds of all time. Uh, in the water, it's very proficient, mm -hmm. uh, flies very proficiently. Uh, on land, extremely clumsy. Uh, you know, they, you know, it's kind of, that may be the reason why the, there's the old saying, crazy is a loon. Um, because there loons can't walk on, on dry land. Uh, they are powerful swimmers. They can dive deeper and swim faster than any other bird, and that includes the penguin. Which uh, is uh, remarkable because if you've ever seen a penguin, the penguin can dive deep. So um, for this bird to beat that penguin, that's impressive. But now, with that being said, because of his abilities and what happens when he appears he will and I repeat will take and increase your dreams make them more vibrant make them more real um, sometimes sometimes you won't be able to discern the real from the unreal but at the same time when the loon appears in your dreams 
this also will is a sign of letting you know uh, things are going to start being a little bit more noticeable. And with me saying that, I got this. I got this. With me saying that, I'm going to pass it over to Luz because she uh, is a little bit more uh, educated than I am when it comes to the dreams. But uh, that's what I that's what I know. Um, yes, I don't know everything, believe it or not. Uh, but Liz, go ahead and tell us what you can. I want to touch a little bit back onto the part of him mentioning crazy as a loon. I love it how some animals gain some of these uh, derogatory meanings to them. Uh, when the loon uh, comes to us, it's also letting you know that maybe some of the aspects of your mind uh, are not quite in tune anxiety uh and just off balance things that you got to work for and uh it, it it's funny how those things kind of all coincide with each other that you got to pay attention to that uh in regards to the dream the fact that the birds uh call it's so hunting if you sit there you can probably remember several movies that have that call and usually in that call is a call that the hairs stand up and your goosebumps just go all the way up because something's going to go down. Freddy's right around the corner, folks. You Pretty know, type much, thing. Pretty much, you know. And, and they, I know in some movies or I Jason heard Or Jason or Michael. Um, and it just gives you those goosebumps. And it's a form of letting you know how things can go down in dreams. And it's the entrance of the dream world when it comes to this bird. The fact that he dives so deep into the water. And water usually has to also do with dream work and reality and the mixture of things. Um, with this bird, it's very important that you keep a journal right now this week. I'm going to show you mine. Had it for. This is one of the, the the latest ones that I have from 2016, believe it or not, all the way down. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, I've gotten a little lazy and I haven't wrote on it. But I, I do get creative with it. Like this first page that I put some of the um, crafting paper on it. And this one here actually is a little note that my mom had wrote. Uh, so I was doing something and it matched what the dream that I had um, Some emails of some things that uh, As I helped some people out and I printed up the email because it matched with the dream That occurred either to that person or myself or just some entries um, There's one here that I was going over the information that caused to my attention was the um one about sitting bull this one about sitting bull like a, a, a two or three days before his his uh day of of a passing his memorial day i had a dream about him and he gave me a really interesting revelation about my own name um and i wrote it down so we're going to be working with dreams. No, I know dreams can be complicated um, to work with and sometimes a, a little bit on the frightening side, but um, we can definitely help you how to break them down. Another companion that I suggest for you to obtain if you don't have one already is this is a it's called a dream dictionary from a to z this guy i love this dictionary i got it in barnes and noble several years ago and it helps me a lot with some certain uh parts of the dreams to help me break it down as far as interpretation um 
people like Wayne say, we want to get you motivated here in the group. And again, if you want to learn, we're willing to teach and put the time in um, with you. I want to no. see if some of you would jot down some of the dreams during this week so we can work that with you. Really yeah, uh, what I was going to say. Now, there's also the that uh, we didn't really touch on. And it, it's unfortunately, it's a hard, cold truth. And, and you know this as well as I do, but there might be somebody out there that doesn't. Um, sometimes when, the, when you're having these dreams, sometimes they have a tendency to bring up um, painful memories. And uh, there's a reason sometimes the, these dreams bring up the painful memories. And the reason behind the painful memories is so that whenever you're having these dreams and the uh, loon has appeared in your dreams, that means that now you can get rid of and yes, you heard me correctly. You can get rid of those painful subjects and replace them with happier things, happier outcomes. Uh, and you know, like yesterday, we start we started a new thing called Song Saturday. Thank you for the ones that participated. And we yes, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, that's going to be something new that I that we would like to continue on doing. Uh, next, I think next week, maybe the week after. I'm not exactly sure on the exact date we're going to be having philosophy friday yes it's, it's coming up in one of that's these gonna, fridays coming, be up, coming uh, up soon our admin uh Madai will will uh, announce when he's going to do the philosophical friday he's uh, getting ready for that mm -hmm. we you know it's a new beginning for some of us uh one of our somebody that I have been helping for years and have been always been in their corner they decided to come and join our group and I'm so thankful that they did because they're always they've always looked for a, a different path than, than the one that they have been walking on and maybe just maybe we can uh we can find that path. Um, help them find the path that they need to be walking. Hello, Lacey. How you doing, love? Uh, she was able to catch us. Mm, I see that. Yes. Uh, I was just talking about you mm -hmm. without mentioning your name. Uh, <laughs> But that's what Shaman Way has always been about, is to help those who may need just that little bit of assistance. Well, in a way, the loon is that, that same way. The loon is there to say, okay, look, I know you need some assistance getting rid of, rid of that old piece of luggage. And, you know, even though it's going to be painful and you're not going to want to think about it, we have to unpack it and we have to deal with it and we have to then throw it away. Been there, done that. I can say that for myself. Been there, done that. I can't speak for her, but I'm sure she could say the same thing. You can also do the same thing. There's ways of being able to unload all that useless, annoying crap uh, that 
sometimes you just have to say, hey, can, can you help me? Mm -hmm. And there's going to be someone there to help you. With the loon, it mentions that, that it's going to be very vivid and very colorful dreams. Very lucid and vivid dreams. Um, I think, again, one of the hardest things that I had uh, heard from a lot of shamans is the interpretation of dreams and the, the state of controlling your dreams and how to uh, travel in your dreams. Um, so it's, it's a complex, uh, it's a complex topic and, and to, to teach certain aspects of it it, it, it takes time um, I want to try to stimulate the group more that's why we're doing more posts that's why we're trying to bring these wonderful topics along and our power animals are just also bringing it on um, I want to offer our members um a a teaching of breaking down a dream with you or, or helping you break down a dream that you might have um to be able to earn that i would like to see you be the top uh contributor contributor of um, post contributor thank you You're welcome. trying to think spanish english and some other languages in there and sometimes it gets jumbled up uh <laughs> the top contributor what is it again contribute con contributor contributor uh of the week <laughs> and then and at the end of the week um i can have a private section with you in regards to uh teaching you how to break down a simple breakdown of a dream and also what things you could have by your bedside well thank you Nisha I appreciate that ever so much what uh, you could have by your bedside to help you with the dreams and dream recalls um, so again to get you guys motivated because we have 400 something members and you guys are very quiet right now now that we're powering it up we're we're getting geared it up these power animals are also bringing it i mean this is the first time we bring out the loom uh, on the meditation it came forward and uh it, it's funny because i myself had a dream yesterday was it yeah it was a very vivid dream which i'm used to um I've been, it's almost a blessing and a curse at the same time that I could see dreams that well and experience them that well um, and uh, how to control the dream but it was very specific things to the point at the end that it, it involves, if you want to call it sort of somebody trying to do something I could say maybe against us so I think it had to do with that person that perhaps passed away. Mm -hmm. I think so. So, uh, very interesting. We have, we have uh, Sunny Day said she, uh, I really enjoy watching the two of you. Thank you. You're very welcome, Sunny. Nisha Patel says, hey there, you both have such great energy. Sending you love from Yorkshire, UK. UK! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for from uh, for you in the UK. Uh, glad we're reaching reaching out to some people out in that direction also. Um, it oh wait a minute. Uh, Nisha also said something. Lucid dreaming since childhood and know for sure it's always guidance in one way or the other. Exactly. Got to trust spirit, the process, and know that there's always a way to healing what needs to be healed. Exactly. You are so right, Nisha. Very true. And Very true. Would you guys like to hear that dream that I had? Well, let's see what they say. Let, let's, let's find out if somebody let's wants see, let's to Let's make hear a little boat if you guys want to hear that dream that I had. 
Yeah, you know, the thing about it was, though, tonight come close to being one of my favorite cartoon characters. Yeah, you're jealous. He's almost <laughs> going to be the roadrunner. Me, <laughs> me. Oh, God. That's because we were watching cars earlier. No, we weren't watching cars. We were amongst gods. We were amongst the <laughs> gods of cars because these two love cars and we were amongst drag racing cars. Misha said yes in regards to it. Um, let me people we got there. watching. Come on, guys. Follow you watching. One said that they want to hear who else wants to um, hear the dream. Love making a live video tonight. I would make like to make more. I'll check on the past videos. And Lacey's even saying, yes, yes, tell the story. Okay, so did my little prayer before I went to sleep. Went to sleep just fine. And here comes entering the dream. I was in a vehicle. Randall says, yes, he was. Surrounded by what I felt were people that I knew. Um, amongst them, there was a couple that had children that I'm pretty sure I know what that couple was. And, I, and the other person that was with me was my other halfway. We traveled to a beautiful wooded area where there was a cabin. And this cabin, I felt like it was our, our cabin. We were inviting people over we were inviting them to our home um the cabin for being as small it looked small on the outside and the inside was a huge cabin so it was a long cabin everybody was getting settled down uh the kids walked over to a window and the window was wide open they were throwing tidbits out the window where there were some beautiful cute bunnies and at that moment i kind of just relaxed Every time I see rabbits and bunnies, it's, it's something uh, of an animal. It's a common animal for me. It, it, yeah, it's something to just relax. So I saw the rabbits, watched the kids throw the little tidbits to them, and I was like, oh, they're cute, beautiful, little white and, and brown rabbits. And I was like, let's go outside. Let's see what we'll throw those tidbits to them outside. So we went outside. I walked a little further away from the kids, kind of amongst the cars. Here's where the 12, the plot starts changing. I saw a wolf, not too far from the cars. Um, normally, wolves for me, I see it as a guy that's a power animal. This, in this in instance, this wolf was sent by somebody. So, it alarmed me to tell the kids to go back in the house. So I kind of rounded the kids and said, well, let's go back into the house. So we went towards the back of the house, inside the back of the, uh, to the house. And as we went back to the house, there was another one on the porch. So I hurry up, got everybody back in the house. And as I'm trying to go into the door, into the house and open the, the door, the screen door, uh, there was uh, a dog, two dogs. One of the dogs was like a white and brown dog, kind of like a Jack Russell, a little bigger. And unfortunately, the dog got out. And I was like, oh man, thank you, dog. You know, trying to get in, get away from these wolves that it doesn't mean no good right now at this point. And the dog got out. Well, unfortunately, the wolf that was in the porch got a hold of the dog. And me being the way I am, I said, none of, none of my watches, these dogs, they're going to get, you know, eaten alive, especially here. I marched right up to the wolf, and I asked, it was a big boy, too. I grabbed the wolf by the ear and grabbed him and brought him back down. And, of course, the wolf let go of the dog that was mulling him. And it gave me this look of, like, you... Mm. You know, I don't want to say the words, but <laughs> and I looked at it right back, and I'm like, you know, it was an intense stare back and forth. Of you're not gonna be able to harm me. You cannot allow me. You're allowed to harm me. That was the end of that part. And then I heard some voices in the background, so forth, and they were by the cars that were parked in front of the cabin. Walk right past the wolf. 
But over then, there was all these people by the cars. And there were these barricades, kind of like you would see at some roadsides, but not the cement barricades, but the plastic barricades. And there was a gentleman standing amongst the other side of the other people. And this gentleman was tall, white, beard, uh, a little bit of a punch belly. And he was saying all kinds of stuff about how he was gonna get us out of this land and he didn't want us there by how you blah blah and just kept mounting those words up and i was already upset because the wolf interfered with my calmness that i had so my my temper was starting to go from here to octons up and beyond and to hear this guy talking all this gibberish and i felt again that the cabin and the and the area was ours rightfully i marched up to this gentleman and the uh, people that were surrounding him on the other side with one of the pieces of the barricade in my hand and stood right in front of him and announced that this was my land with all rights to it uh that my ancestors have been here long before the written word came around and that we will be here long before long after the man looked at me and said you know that he would get rid of all of us starting with me oh there went my temper i took the <laughs> the barricade and put it horizontal and i slammed it so hard in the ground that i actually made it stick about three feet into the ground and the man just jumped back and I could see the fear in his face and he stopped talking. That was the end of that. Again, marched away going like, okay, can we have some peace now? I kept saying throughout the dream at this point. And as I'm walking towards back to the house, one of the kids toys that was on the ground caught on fire, it was a weird fire. One of the parents came and grabbed the child and said, that's a message and it's not a good one. And I was like, I figured that. And I motioned for the parent to get the child away from the fire. So I walked right in front of the fire, on the toy that was on fire. It died down and a message did appear, almost like a board. And it looks like some uh, tie-ons of when people try to do a binding of black magic and so forth, and like a white board of paper all around it. And then a sword with a white handle. I look straight at the message, and I do apologize, but I'm gonna say the words that the message said. It said, you bitch, loose. And then it had a name to it. I looked at the message and I'm like, whatever you are. It, you know, it fell back right on you, whatever you did. And then it just kind of, everything just kind of crumbled and I walked away. A um, little bit after that, I woke up to hear Wayne announce that somebody that he knew that, unfortunately, the person was an ex-family member of his and the person did not have a very good reputation as far as the character and the things that they did have passed away. And the person was known for doing a little bit of... They had a tendency to want to try to use cast spells and stuff like that. And it was, you know, they had tried it with me a couple of times and I just kind of I blew it off because I knew what they were trying to do and I knew how to not allow it to happen. And Nisha, you are right. The man that stood in front of me uh, reminded me a lot of the president that Yeah, that's not talk remember. we're not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
But Under the grounds that the FCC might say something to me, I will not say the words that I want to say. And I think, uh, you know, in dreams like that, people that you would recognize as a tyrant and uh, uh, abuser of power will, will come to uh, into view so you know what position is of that that's happening or the, or the seeing of what happening at that point so yes it, it it's funny because i don't i don't watch too much the news or anything again like you heard how i went to sleep I'm not thinking about anything but um yeah it it's uh it was a very interesting dream and and the fact that then he turned around in the morning and when he turned around and told me what had occurred and the way this person passed uh, was like huh okay um you know there is unfortunately people out there that they don't live their lives like they should and then they don't want to let anybody else live their life you know uh going back to the mockingbird mind your own business you come forward and you try to attack a family member be careful you might see a bull that's laying down and you think it's asleep until the bull wakes up and i say that because i'm a tourist the world is sick it's sad but they don't see black cats and being that they look like orcs from the Lord of the Rings when attacks are sent to me. Yeah, I, I, I know that feeling. Oh, when I was reading two different things. <laughs> I ended up, but they don't want to be healed. We get, gave, give to a respect that, uh, respect that like we need to respect ourselves in those situations. Exactly, Lacey, you're absolutely right. It is interesting to you see wolves to represent threat. I mm -hmm. see black cats and being that looks like orcs from the Lord of the Rings when attacks are sent to me. Wow. Well, me too. I have seen many of different animals that when people have tried to send things out to me. Um, and lately, things when people try to especially use certain animals to come at, at me or a family member it kind of backfires on them because i i tend to be able to manipulate or control the animal somehow i see and, and um, myself and myself uh uh and louise will tell you tell you this to be a fact she is she has seen him uh one of the Yes, my main spirit animal uh, is, is the eagle. It is the eagle. But my, at the same time, one of my, my protective animals that is around me at all times, uh, he stays a lot in the shadows. Uh, and we call him, uh, we call him uh, Lil, his name is Lilfoot. But he's probably one of the biggest okay. My camera man is trying to tell me something. Uh, he is probably one of the biggest wolves you have ever seen in your entire life and he's called Littlefoot. So, you know, but he is one of my protectors, one of my uh, once let me know when certain things are wrong. Would you not agree? Yes, I agree. I've seen <laughs> him many of them. And he is not a small wolf. He's a big old boy. Um, you know, I believe in karma so deeply. She's such a goddess. Um, people do things and it catches up to them. Uh, yeah. Some people believe in hell, you know, that when you pass, then you did something wrong in your life, then you might end up there. I deeply believe that what you do in this earth, you will pay in this earth before you go on uh, and transition. 
and I have seen it many a move with people who have done many evil things that one way or the other catches up to them in such a bad way that you just go like, oh my word, wow, <laughs> you know, so, oh yeah, karma, oh, I love karma, karma is, oh. um, you know, we have different spirit guides. Some are protecting spirit guides. Some of them are healers. Some of them, they all play a different role. Um, I have a spirit guide that when things go that south, uh, it might take him a bit. But once he gets and catches up to that person, it's, it's all more good for that person for a while. You know? Um... <laughs> That's all I gotta yeah, say and, about that guy. And it's very, it's very interesting that how sometimes people who don't know people, their spirits have a tendency to know each other already. And That's in nice. in some cases, um, when perfect example here's a you you meet somebody. And no matter how much you you go, well, that person isn't for me. That person isn't. There's not. They're nothing like me. They're they're completely so different. Yeah, they're different, but they're the same as you, and you are the same as them. You know, it kind of goes back to that, almost that opposite to track type thing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the many differences is what makes a whole. Sometimes you have to have those other differences that... <coughs> To some people would can be considered idiotic, but yet in your life, those idiosyncrasies, those things that drive other people absolutely batty, works for you. I'm gonna give you a little taste here real quick of... Sure. Oh, yes, no, sorry. One more, one sorry. more thing. Sorry. sorry. No, you're, you're fine, you're fine. You know, sometimes a person that you don't necessarily, at first, you didn't necessarily think at first would be the right person sometimes has a tendency to be the exact person you needed. I've had I've known somebody for a minute and they, they sometimes question, well, could I be happy with that person? Could I be happy with that person? Yes, you could be very happy with that person. You're already happy with that person. And with that said, I will pass it to Bruce. I apologize for the low interruption. <laughs> You're right. That was, that was my fault. That was uh, interrupting you to my point, sir. <laughs> Um, going back to this this book, or if you have any uh, dream work books uh, or dictionaries, again, this is one's called The Dream Dictionary from A to Z by Teresa Shung. And I just want to read a little part here about the wolf, for example. Dreaming of a wolf suggests that the dreamer may be feeling threatened by other people or may be vulnerable in some situation. The wolf, as suggested by fairy tales like the Red Riding Hood, also represents the female fear of powerful male sexuality and yet might also fi figure uh, in female sexual fantasies. Wolves are also symbols of repressed sexuality and anger. There's a lot of recap on that right there of different things that depending what 
to dream no, and tell. No, you didn't miss a live. It's on right now. <laughs> so that's just a little bit there. Um, and of course, it also depends because in this instance, the wolves were coming towards me. Now, if I was walking already with the wolves, for me, the dream would have been different. But um, the first part of the interpretation pretty much did match, like we all concluded. It was somebody being, you know, sending threats to uh, to me. So, and it's very, very nice little dream Bible that's very helpful. Um, so again, I would like to see you guys compose a dream journal. Again, this is what mine looks like. A simple notebook. I literally got some, um, uh, what you might call it, um, scrapbooking paper and printed some pictures that I like and literally took some masking tape, you know, some packing tape and just taped the, the picture, uh, pictures and everything on there. And it's just a regular notebook that you can get real cheap in your local uh, grocery store. And uh, that's my little dream journal with some uh, either awesome or scrapbooking pages or just regular me writing stuff. I even have printed up emails of, of things that have occurred as I help some people out. Um, here's one of my favorite pictures of Archangel Michael, that you can see on there. I absolutely love him, that picture of him. Um, one of my favorite Archangels to work with and so forth. Um, so I look at this dream journal, it's funny how it starts with uh, my centaur, from the centaur to the archangel to at the end so far of the of where it's the last entry that I had made, which was Sitting Bull. So a lot of, lot of different dreams uh, and uh, interpretations of what was going on. Thank you, Nisha. May the straight spirit also be smiling on you. It's it's 3 a.m. where she's at. Lord have mercy, girl. You gotta get to sleep. Yeah, that's what she says. I better get some sleep. She says we're fab. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nisha. Um, we're glad that you was able to catch us. Um, we try to do something. We've been trying to do something every week. We'll try to do them a little earlier next time, maybe around eight-ish o'clock, so that way. And I know it's hard for them when they're in the UK because their their time frame is so different. But yeah. may you have sweet dreams, sweetie. Sweet dreams. Uh, if there's. Jot them down. Yeah, write them down. down. Everybody got homework. Jot them down again. I'm gonna throw that out there. The biggest contributor. Uh, of this week by the end of the week i'll give a, a private little section about uh, dreams and things that you should have near your bed to help you into uh going into that dream state so give you a little incentive yes 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 uh wait a minute uh, uh thank you i will catch you both soon big love much love to you nisha thank you Anybody have any questions? If there's Mark any peeps, questions, yeah, please go ahead and post any them Any questions about the loom? <laughs> yeah, okay, Lena, thanks. <laughs> I've never been cute. <laughs> He's adorable, you're right. You know how guys are, they don't see themselves as adorable, you know, or cute. They're like... Oh. The loom again. <laughs> we're working this week with the throat chakra. Besides with dreams, and that's because of the of the uh, vocalization of the loom. Lacy um, Lacy writes, "I am happy you were talking on this. I have experienced the dreams and myself searching very recently. A lot answered and learned. Mm -hmm. Well, glad." Glad you uh, you look at it that way, Lacey. Um, one thing, and and a number of people, 
probably get sick and tired of me saying this, but uh, Lacey, the one thing that I have always believed, and this is something that I have completely and totally my thoughts go to, we are all teachers and yet we are all students. So, I mean, there might be something that you can teach us. Uh, we're teaching you this right now. Uh, maybe we can get somebody, you know, as I said, we're going to be starting some new programs here on the thing, and maybe we can... Uh, and there's Lucinda White. Lucinda, Hello. hey, sweetheart. How you doing, love? Uh, but, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. If you just thank you. join us. We're talking about the power animal of the loom, the master of dreams. Um, but, uh, as I said, we're all, we're all students here. Um, I'm sure that there's people out there that knows a lot more about about uh, meditation stones than I do and we have somebody that actually teaches that um, Luz is very proficient when it comes to doing when it comes to looking at dreams and stuff like so on and so forth I have my certain talents that I have uh, we all have talents just remember that we all have talents it's just how willing are you H are you hon how are you oh I am okay how, okay got it I thought she was saying what okay okay how are you <laughs> uh, So like I said, if there's a, if there's a wish to publish my dreams and recent journeys on my recent post in the comments, it's a bit long. Well? Well, whatever you feel that it it moves you and if you want to put anything that it helps you break down the dream or anything like that for any uh, other members to learn, go for it again. Um, I'm trying to get this would be your chance of teaching. To, yeah, this, this is, is your a, chance of teaching to help others. You know, we can learn from other experiences, maybe any books or anything that people have used, all the techniques and methods. But uh, again, the top contributor, I'm gonna mention again, top contributor at the end of the week, I uh, will have a private session with them in regards to things that you should have near your bed and breaking down some of the dreams. Um, that's uh, interesting. I like that idea. Why don't we have? Why don't we have everybody that's interested and willing and able? Why don't you post uh, one of your dreams throughout the week? Oh, that so would be an excellent idea. Of what you have, yeah. whether you know how to break down the dream or whether you don't know how to break down the dream. A dream that maybe you have that's recurring that you had trouble trying to interpret well let's do that let's go ahead and have everybody that again that's willing and able to go ahead and post if you don't want to type it down and you want to do a video and just say what the dream was go ahead whatever works for you there typing it down or <coughs> put it in a video Excuse me. and put it into the group and uh that's going to be a wonderful exercise for everybody as a group. And it's something that we need because as shamans and as people that we're helping others, a lot of people will come to you with some dreams and some aspects that uh, of their nighttime that it's, it's you know, it, it, it's difficult. They'll have people that are having problems sleeping, that have anxiety. You have people, unfortunately, having attacks by other people. You have people that are so lucid in their dreams and they don't know how to control it. Like they have an astral projection all coming out of their body and they don't know how to control that. You know, it's just so many different topics involved in that. That's amazing. Um, 
And for those of us, for those of you who think that astral projection does not exist, rethink your thought. They're in the wrong group if they think that <laughs> projection does not exist. Let me tell you right now, if you're in a shaman's way and you believe the astral projection is not real and it's something made up in a joke, uh, please exit. Re, 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 no. I'm going to ask you. Have to, you don't have to exit. Just rethink your thoughts. I'm going to ask you very nicely to just. I'm just going. I'm not going to sit here and try to convince them. You know, I'm just going to say then you're in the wrong group. You know. Um, <laughs> We ask your project all the time. And, you know, that's how you do remote healing. God. That's how you do remote healing. That's how you do a lot of uh, viewing and seeing your astral project. Good night, Linda. We love you, honey. Oh, she's in the other side of the world, too. Well, Sweetheart. She, she's, she's, in, she's, in, she's in Canada. Her, yep. her, her, and, her and the hubby decided to try to build a shed against their house, so... They, they've they're been working, they're working on all Ooh, of the all muscle day. power muscle power <laughs> that's a Off good exercise bed. yeah good night sweetie say hi to you to have have sweet dreams sweet dreams journal journal sweet dreams <laughs> journal sweet dreams journal sweet dreams sweet dreams journal um with that, okay, with that anybody being said. Anybody have questions? Any sir, Everybody got homework? You have been homework. assigned your homework. The loom, running me on the loom. You know what? Before we close this down, because I just, the, 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 I want to say it's music, but, you know, let me go back over here for a sec, because we had more. Let me look. Hear this again. For those of you that have just joined us. No, that's not a wolf. That's a bird. And it's a loom. There he goes again. Let's do one more. On many an occasion, I've been camping what? in the Adirondacks, and one of my favorite periods is right at dusk. Thank you, sir. Let go away. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there is the the call of the loom, and like I was mentioned earlier, there are some movies that you will hear with this call. And it does kind of make your screen crawl. It's one of those birds that is song is very haunting. Um, going to get homework, a different kind of homework too. You got to, you're gonna have two homeworks. One homework is about posting one of your own dreams, whether you know the interpretation or not of it. And the other one is I will see if somebody do a little bit of background on the loom as far as where is the loom uh, mostly seen what part of the world um, see if somebody can post something about that Homework. and with that yes with that we shall bid you adieu it's 10 o'clock here in Orlando uh, dark Florida now because it's not sunny right now. It's nighttime. I know that was a kind of joke of my husband. <laughs> we have much love for you. Wadu. Thank you for joining us. And we pray that the Great Spirit blesses you. Mother Earth protects you. And loves you just as much as you love Mother Earth. With that, we must say namaste. Much love. And Thanks again, up. thank you for joining us. Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> okay.